Liz, calm down. You don't want to hurt me. It's all I think about. Lucky needs a doctor. I'm going to go to the phone, and I'm going to dial 911. No. You turn all around. You'll make me the criminal. Lucky, what's your Aunt Bobby's number? No, I'm okay, really. No, you're Let's not. A... No, I hurt you bad. <sighs> Who's that? Richard? I know, Lady Ken, I'm sorry. Get your medical bag and grab the first aid stuff from the bathroom. No, get rid of them. Richard's a doctor. What did you do? Did you hurt yourself? We have a problem. Liz, he can help. Let him. The student that you told me about? You told him? Elizabeth, put the knife down. Why you? What does any of this have to do with you? There's a boy bleeding in my living room. Is that enough? Elizabeth, put it down. How's your abdomen? Uh, it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the rug. <sighs> Manners intact. That's a good sign. I don't understand. Why did this happen? I thought he was you. You break into my house? With the intention of what? Of making you admit what you did. Admit what? What have I done that is so terrible? You raped me. I didn't think he would tell you that. Oh, my God. Did you think I'd be too afraid, too ashamed to say it? Not anymore. What does your nice, respectable doctor friend think of you now? The ski mask? I found it in your closet. The one you wore the night that you raped me? I think that's mine. And don't most of them look alike? It doesn't matter, because I already knew. That soap you use, which I can't smell without wanting to vomit. The way you look at me in class, always watching, always so concerned about my education. You used me. You used me, and you left me bleeding in the snow. A big, red valentine. Oh, tears won't help. Trust me, I've cried enough of them. Liz, I am so sorry. I had no idea. You're still lying! It wasn't him. Look! You may think you know he him. He lives here. So? Elizabeth, they're a couple. I'm gay, Elizabeth. You live, right? A few inches up or down or to one side. Well, they don't call me lucky for nothing. Well, it'll only cut through the fatty tissue here, but still you're going to need five, six stitches to keep it closed. Okay. Can your parents come and get you? I don't live with my parents. All right. Well, who's your doctor? Well, it used to be my Uncle Tony, but I guess now it's just the emergency room. Can you sew him up? Can I sew him up? Yeah, sure, but... I mean, I don't imagine that knife was sterile, and when was your last tetanus shot? <laughs> is, is that what the school nurse gave us last fall? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well. <sighs> All right, you allergic to penicillin? Mm-mm. I'll call in the prescription for an antibiotic. You're going to pick it up when you leave here, and then you're going to take it until it's gone. Okay. That's us at a birthday party. Richard's showing off his muscles. You have a lot of pictures. Yeah. Mostly from the first five years. I uh, probably couldn't find the camera right now. I don't see any of your wife. Eleanor. How do you know Eleanor? I don't. She wouldn't talk to me. 
I think it's because she's still terrified of you. I think it's because you raped her, too. After she called the police and reported you for domestic violence. Oh, there's no point in lying. Lucky went and talked to some of your old neighbors where your ex-wife still lives. We know what went on. I didn't live in that house. And the man who did is now in jail. Eleanor and I were married just out of high school. I had a lot to learn about myself, obviously. We were separating when we bought that house. That's why we bought it, because Eleanor wanted it. But we had to have both of our incomes in order to secure the mortgage. Later, I was glad that I had my name in the title because I was able to help evict that man that she got involved with. That's the man that your neighbors were talking about. He hurt her. She pressed charges. He was sentenced to eight years. Look, if you don't believe me, I can call Eleanor right now. And I can tell you what Ted did almost every minute of Valentine's Day. And look, after school, he stayed to help with the dance decorations at the gym. He chaperoned the dance from seven to nine, and I picked him up. The gay lesbian chorus was having a Valentine's Day dance. We went with friends, two women that I work with. They will tell you the same thing. I'm sorry for failing you. How? As a matter of fact, you passed me which is something else I don't get. No, I failed. You're my student, and I was supposedly the responsible adult who knew that something was very wrong. I was just too afraid that you were going to find out my secret, and it never even occurred to me that you had a secret of your own. Richard, he, he says that I'm paranoid. I mean, it's easy for him to say he's not a school teacher. Being a school teacher is one of the most sensitive jobs a gay person can hold, and I love it. And I'm good at it. And I'm willing to fight for it. Which is what I told Richard I thought I was going to have to fight you for. You thought I knew? Well, I didn't have any other explanation. Normally, you're, you're, you're witty. You're bright. You laugh easily. And then all of a sudden, you got around me and you... like you were incapacitated by hatred. You stopped coming to class. You didn't turn in your homework. You failed your midterm. You failed your final. I, I mean, you, your intelligence, obviously wasn't the problem. It was how you felt about me. That's why I couldn't see any point in having you repeat the class next year. That's why I offered to tutor you, but then it became clearly apparent that you couldn't even stand being in the room with me. Uh, but you told my Graham that you, you thought I had a crush on you. <laughs> what was I supposed to say? Oh, I think your granddaughter hates me. Well, not me, homosexuals. And she just found out that I am one. That is why I revised your grade upwards. I could see no point in failing you. Because it was the teacher, not the subject, that you couldn't stomach. Was it also a bribe? Did you think that if you passed me, then whatever I knew, I'd just keep to myself? Maybe. Maybe I hoped it had worked out that way. Yeah. Mr. Murdy. <laughs> I'm as guilty as she is, man. I, I'm, I'm really well, sorry. Could you people lighten up on yourselves, each other? I look around this room and I don't see guilty parties. I see injuries. You don't seem to be keeling over, but don't forget about that prescription. I won't. Thanks. You're parked outside. Can I use your car and drop them off? Yeah. Keys are in the kitchen. You're not driving me home. You're not walking. Look. I broke into your house carrying a knife, wanting to hurt you. Not calling the police is favor enough. The only thing I want to hear from the police well, is that they caught the man. They here. haven't, okay? And they're not going to because they stopped trying. I'll go get the keys. Of 
what I did to them. They have a right to their own lives, too. What I did to you. My best friend. Best friend I'll ever have. At least... At least now you know. Right? Yeah, right. I thought it was gonna be over. And now I know it's not. And it never will be.